in today's video, we're diving into something a little different. Using print instead of poke on the Commodore 64. Now the poke command is a classic way to program on the 64. It's how we change memory values to define sprites, game screens, or load small assembly routines using BASIC. But there's a thing, poke can be a bit slow, especially when you use it repeatedly in BASIC. So I start experimenting, wondering if there might be a faster or more efficient method. And that's where print comes in. Let's give me a small demonstration on this. Okay. Well, I prepared a demo to show you the difference between the creating the values with poke on the screen and using the technique that we explained to do the same with print. So let's load that program. It's a basic program. And not that original name, but it's demo one. So first let's have a look at the program itself, list. So you can see it's quite short. So at the first line, we uh, clean the screen. The second and the third line is used to define two small strings with one character namely to uh, for inverse off and on then four lines to uh, show the different uh, values to create the different values for the string as we uh, mentioned in the table before and then print them and then the last part is do the same but then using poke so let's run that program so the first part of the screen will be filled using the print and the second part will be used uh, using poke and you can instantly see the difference between the two let's have a look so you instantly see that uh, printing the different characters is instantly and then poking you can just follow the characters placed one by one on the screen using the loop so this we can also use uh, to program sprites into memory and do other fun stuff let me show you further. Okay, after the small demo with the inverse, uh, let's look at the table I created, which we can use to get all the values we need to put to use print to get the uh, by, uh, correct byte values into the screen memory. So here you can see the first set is with the inverse off so let's say when we print the value 64 we get the memory byte value 0 on the screen and for another example if we print the character value 160 160 we get the 96 value byte memory value and if we put the inverse on we get the opposite so then if we have 64 it starts with 128 and if we use 160 we get 224. Well, this we can use uh, to get the, to create the right print commands or to construct a string using with print to fill the memory with the uh, byte values and that we can use let's say for example to uh, define a sprite. So let me show you how that uh, can be done. Okay, after that first uh, demo, the printing and poking, let's see what we can do with it to make it a little bit more useful. For that I have another uh, uh, program uh, prepared already. Let me show you that. Just have a look at it. Okay, the first uh, two lines look a bit, uh, well, garbage, but these are the characters that actually define the sprite. So what I have done, I created all the values in the string. And uh, the second part is uh, only the poke commands for displaying the sprite. So let's say to, to show and place the sprite somewhere in the left the screen maximized so that you can see it 
So let's run this program and see what happens. Hmm. You, you see uh, now only a garbage sprite. And if I move down the cursor a bit, you can see that it constantly changes. That's because of the start of the address of the sprite definition is uh, the same as the address of the screen. So it's uh, 1024. If I now print the st string that I created and place it on the screen, still nothing happened. But uh, the fun part is that if I scroll this up to the top of the screen, where actually the sprite definition is, if uh, you can see, if I move it up, bam, there the sprite. So now you can see that using the print command, we can actually use that to define sprites. If I scroll further down, sprite definition is gone again. And I, of course, can do that instantly using the character 147 to clean the screen and directly place the other string behind it. And if you do that, you instantly see the sprite, which is much faster than using a poke. Well, and the second thing now we need to solve is that because this is the screen address, which we used to, for the print. But normally you would use the screen for other things than uh, for the sprite definitions. But uh, we have a solution for that as well, because in the manual, there's a chapter uh, where it stated how you can move the screen area and the edit area of the Commodore to another location. And that we can use to go back and forth. I will show you that in the next uh, demo. Okay, let's have a look at the final uh, demo in which we move the screen area, define the sprite, move back so that it is more useful. Uh, Let's load the demo for that. Third one. You can find them all on the GitHub. The links are in the comments. So let's list the program. The first two lines are exactly the same. They define the sprint, the sprite data. Then the second part is also almost the same. It is placing the sprite on the screen. But one difference is that the poke command uh, informing the VIC where to find the sprite data is a little bit different because here's the value 192 and in the previous uh, demo it was 16. And so now with this it is pointing to the address 12288 and the rest is the same, just placing the sprite on the screen. So, and then we have a third part and, and a fourth part. This part will move the screen location and this will move it back. To the original location. So if we run it, it will only run until line 200 and that will place the sprite on the screen. In the previous demo, if I move the sprite, if I move on the screen, the sprite will change. But now, because the address is a different location and the screen is still the same, uh, nothing happens. So if we now move to, uh, if we execute, no, don't use go, uh, run because then the the variables are clear, uh, reset. So we go to 600 and we execute that part of the program. We're now on the new screen location. You can see that just whatever was in the memory is displayed on the screen. We can clean that. So it just cleaned. We can list the program, it's still there. Now what we can do is print the sprite definition and let's do that directly on top of the screen. So it's now there. And as you can see, the uh, sprite is still garbage because that is uh, because the VIC chip can only display uh, different banks of data. We can change that as well, but for our demo it's not uh, necessary. So if we now go to the last part of the program, just move back to our original uh, screen location, you will see the sprite is on the screen. 
And also everything that we have done before is also on the screen. So switching back and forth between the different uh, screen locations is also something you can make use of when defining your screens of your game. And now you can see that the sprite will remain there because it's still on the address 12288. We can prove that by just poking one byte into that location, let's say the maximum. And you can see it is changed. So the, uh, you actually know that the sprite data is still there and the sprite uh, will remain active. So this is what I want to show you. So maybe you can make use of it in your programs. And it was fun to experiment with this. Uh, see you next time.